Thanks to the supporters and channel members, Stephen Paul. Well, another season of disappointment as our slow climb up the US league structure continues. It's another summer rebuild. Half of that team you saw playing yesterday's episode are out of contract and probably leaving. We're having another summer of gambling on being able to replace them with better players, which went so well last time. Hello and welcome to part 45 of Born in the USA. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have our season review and transfer special and we're leaping straight into a season review, a season review that has no trophies on it. Much sadness. So these were the players that came in this summer. Um, signing of the season has gone to Bigenk Beknazarov, who played 10, he started 10 games and got signing of the season. That says a lot about our transfer policy last summer and how it wasn't so much a policy as a scattergun sign anyone who'll come and hope they end up any good. To be fair, Pedro Ariaga probably is going to feel a little bit hard done by 50 games played, 11 goals from centre-back, and a 7.32. We've got him on loan again for another year. I can only assume loans don't count towards signing of the season, because otherwise Ariaga definitely gets it. Jason Johnson was a flop. We released Jackson Hernandez to sign this guy. We'll be trying to reverse that, that move this summer if Hernandez hasn't retired um, Nick Costa, at, at 35 years old, played 54 games. Um, he's probably going to need replacing. Paulus, 53 games in central midfield, but only averaging a 6.52. He was our great hope when we brought him in last summer. I don't know that that was uh, a sufficient upgrade on Pedro Goncalves and Booth. Was that the guy who was in for like six months to be released? I don't know if Paulus is going to make it or not, but we shall see. Um, Goran Pavlov, he was looking for us to reach the playoff. We reached the playoff. We finished fifth. As far as Goran's concerned, it was a good season. A good season where Jorge Hernandez got 36 goals again, so he played very well. And if we take the disappointment at the very end out of the way, you have to remember it was a good season. We went into this year looking for mid-table. We finished fifth. We definitely have a platform to build on. And um, it, depending on what comes down from the division above, it's difficult to know if the league is still shuffling itself and having all the academy teams drift to the top. There's not many left at this level. I don't know if there's any coming down, but I feel like this might be a league that's winnable for us next year. And both us and Baltimore, as teams who've competed with each other in the past, will probably be looking at this, and in particular looking at High Desert Elite, thinking if they can go up, we can definitely go up. And I wouldn't be surprised to see a, a battle between us and Baltimore in this season to come. Um, Sponsorship-wise, we haven't taken on any new sponsors. We've had no change in our club reputation. We still have no money. Um, although Goran Pavlov has started filtering money through the club from somewhere. Um, so we're not currently in debt, which is nice. And we sold 102 shirts. And of course, Hernandez selling more shirts than anybody else. And Beck Nazarov can sit. We obviously don't charge per letter. Um, on our shirts, because this one's going to cost about 80 quid to get Beck Nazarov 50 on your shirt. It must just be a flat fee, and he only played 10 games. Those people are going to be gutted. Uh, maybe we should have played him a little bit more often. Uh, this was our team of the year. So is a glaring goal, and Kiel at left-back, who was recalled to his parent club in about March. And to be honest, that did cause us problems. Um, him leaving really did turn the season a little bit. He'd been a very important member of the team at left-back up until that point. Um, and he went back to uh, the Maryland Bobcats who didn't play him. They loaned him out to El Paso, also in our league, and they didn't play him either. So I have to think, what was the point of bringing him back? I know they wanted him to play as a centre-back, but surely playing as a left-back in a promotion-winning team is better than playing centre-back, or is better than not playing at all, which is what he's gone to El Paso and done. So that's a little bit frustrating. Uh, Brooke, Ariaga and Costa, the rest of the back four, then Briones and Paulus, in midfield, Williams, Huyan, Hernandez and Stone as the front four. Looks about right. Um, Awards-wise, Hernandez with a, a clean sweep, apart from signing of the season because he couldn't win it again. Um, but he's got the fans player of the year, the young player of the year. He got goal of the season, top goal scorer with 43 and most assists with 40. That is still insane. 83 goal contributions from the same player. He actually broke his own assists record this year that he set the year before. Um, he also got highest average rating, as you'd expect. And Paulus, with best pass completion, Beck Nazarov, as we know from before, got signing of the season. We had no competition awards. Somehow, there's obviously not an award for most assists because no one's got more assists than him, surely. 
and that Hernandez breaking his own assist record, as mentioned before. Diego Briones has now set the record for most league appearances at 210. Not bad for a player who's never been higher than like one and a half star current ability. And Jorge Hernandez has now broken Jackson Hernandez's um, record for all-time goals scored and is on 99 league goals for Bourne. And as long as we can keep hold of him this summer, he should push well into the hundreds next year. So this is our all-time best 11. Kotel Yarov, still the goalkeeper of the all-time best 11. Um, he's now living in Seacoast United and playing for the Phantoms down in the Northern Premier League, having left Valeo, who we sold him to when he was done with us. At left back, it's Ben Logan, who's at Mass United. He's been there a couple of years now. I wonder if he's worth bringing back. Uh, Toby Neese, another one. I mean, Toby Neese is available. I look at Toby Neese and think, we could have used him this year. Who wants him? Se several teams want him. I, you know what? Let's offer Toby Neese a trial. He might just decide to come home. That would be nice if you did. Jeff Brook, obviously, still here. And then Ben Garlic has now retired. Um, he went to see, he went back to Seacoast United and retired there. Goncalves in midfield with Brioni. So Goncalves is now playing for Elm City in the Atlantic National League. So that's the league below. Seems to be doing quite well there. Um, he's wanted by quite a lot of teams, to be honest. Um, should we give should we give Pedro a little bit of a scout? That would be a return, wouldn't it, if we just bring the old boys back? Brioni's we know about. Williams, Huyan, obviously we know about as well. Um, that must be Jorge. That is Jorge Hernandez, along with Prince Fletcher up front. Has Prince Fletcher retired yet? Um, he hasn't. He's just been sat unavailable forever, although Bellingham United are now interested in him. But he left us, went to the Tacoma Stars. He's been out of con. He's been a, fr a free agent for well over a year. We'll offer him a trial, but he doesn't want to come to us because he wants a full time contract. And then on the bench, Buckner left us during the playoffs. He left to go and play for Rhode Island down in the Central Premier League. Uh, Travis Sullivan, um, we know, left for the San Diego Gauchos last year for actual money and is playing in the US National League Division One, which is, I think that's the division above the one we're playing in. Um, is he out of contract? He is out of contract. So it's worth keeping an eye on Travis Sullivan to see if we can maybe squeeze him back in. Flores is still here. Favre's still here. Jackson Hernandez never found a club after leaving us. Um, he's wanted by Elm City. Let's get him back in on trial. Let's see if we can bring Jackson Hernandez back. Um, and then Ariaga. We is that Ariaga? Ariaga. Who is Ariaga? Oh, Ariaga is the centre back. I thought I, I still get them confused, even though there's only one here. I thought that was the guy who was recalled. And then Stephen Stone in there as well. And we've done the review. We know about all this stuff. What's Gore and want for us this year? And um, repair the club's financial damage. What financial damage? We're doing all right. Um, and wants us to reach the playoffs again next season. I can do that. That's definitely something we can work towards. Stephen Stone is our team leader, as you'd expect from our longest serving player. Um, and we'll just tell the boys that we're looking for the playoffs again, um, which they seem pretty happy with. It's definitely doable. Um, new season team. I thought we're not going to worry too much about that. That always seems to be an absolute nonsense. There's not a chance that... I mean, who's this guy? Who's S. Preston? Seth Preston? He's 15 years old. I mean, to be honest, at two star, maybe, I don't know. Maybe, maybe we should go with Seth Preston and whoever this guy is, Gareth Carpenter. Are we going back to bringing 15 year olds into the team? Who's this guy? Resky Wayhu. Wayhu. He's got two and a half star current. He's the best right back at the club. Why are we not playing Resky Wayhu? Tell you what, we're going to be playing Resky next season, that's for sure. Um, we need to keep a better eye on the young players when they get that must have been the most recent youth intake. Um, give him a pat on the head and have a look at the situation we're in. We're slightly overpaying on our wage budget, but with the players leaving, we drop down below it a little bit again. I don't expect wage budget to go up this year. Um, should we just have a look at who is out of contract? So still out of contract this summer at this stage. Nick Costa. Well, now we know about Resky. Costa can go. Uh, Flores, I'm happy to let him leave. Maldonado, again, these are fringe players. Diego Briones is a difficult one. Because like I say, he has never been considered any good. But then we watch what he does in the match engine. He scores goals. He's always involved. He feels like a constant, th constant threat. 
He's played over 200 games for us over the course of five years and he's never been considered any good. Why am I now holding his star rating against him now when he's never had a decent star rating and has never let us down? He's had so many midfield partners come in and he's seen them all off. So Brioni's might get a new deal. If we can get him on a non-contract, I think that'd be perfect. Likewise, with Sam Williams, I don't know that I want to give Sam Williams another another proper contract. I know he's been here. He's another one who's been here five years. Always seems a threat. Always weighs in with some assists. Never gets a good average rating. I don't really want to be giving either of those guys actual money, but if I can get him on non-contracts, let's see if that's even doable. Um... Come on, Diego, don't let me down. Go on a non-contract. I'm not committing to a salary for you. Um, so we need it to, we need his non-contract to hit around £80 a week. Like his, so if we just do this, is that, that doesn't work. How was How is this worth £80 a week? We need to give him like an appearance fee of eighty. But that's got that takes up more wage budget. I genuinely don't understand. You know what? Just reset. Take all this nonsense off. Give him one year. One year. Come on. Shouldn't be doing this at all. He's not good enough. But He's Diego Briones. How can we not want to keep him around? Likewise, Sam Williams. These are players that we use. I think we've made the mistake in the past of letting players leave who were in our first team who we thought we could go and get better than and we weren't able to get better than. So if they're in the first team, even if they're rubbish, they get a new contract. And then if we find someone better, we're stuck with them for a year and then we can let them go. So that does affect the committed spending a little, I guess. Next season's wage budget, 3.7k per week. It better not be. It continued. Goran, what have you got to say to me about the wage budget? Toby Nice doesn't want to come back. Jackson Hernandez doesn't want to come back. Prince Fletcher doesn't want to come back. That's more like it. I mean, you've got a misleading accountant working in there, Goran. That's actually quite nice that we've had a few increases. I wonder if any of these will actually just sign new contracts. See, he's someone who never should have been released. On the rules of this year, he doesn't get released last year. Can we just offer him a new contract? Only recently left the club. You left a year ago, Toby. Jackson, same basis. Should never have been released. I don't think they understand the word recent. What's Prince Fletcher's excuse? He left years ago. The financial package from Bourne isn't enough to convince me to relocate. This is where you live, Prince. Unless you've moved. Place of birth, Bourne. What do you mean relocate? You've been unemployed for a year and a half. Are you telling me you're not back living with your mum and dad in Bourne? What a moron. So first signing of the summer is in. David Hurst, a two and a half star central midfielder, four star, uh, five star, sorry, potential. This is still ridiculous. English US is the most widely language, widely spoken language in Bourne and Hurst doesn't speak it at all. Hurst is an American, born in Massachusetts and he's fluent in English. This is why all our new signings are immediately, uh, immediately capped for a little while, but... Um, he's almost as good as Paulus, better than Brioni's. We have given Brioni's his new contract now, but he might not play. Um, he's been around the local area quite a lot for a number of years. Never played at this level. Let's see if he can, I guess. Also, following on from something from yesterday's episode, when I was asking about loaning players from proper Bourne, um, I've decided it's fair game to go for Lubinkovic. He probably won't come to us um, because Southampton are in for him as well. He's on £145,000 a week. Um, but there's players from the other academy sides on several thousand pounds a week. And it, I, this isn't just me being mental saying it's fair game. They're willing to let me make the offer for him. But every other player they've got on the loan list, they're not interested in letting me have. Um, would prefer to play with higher quality players. Um, it's the same all the way through. The younger ones are too young to come. So he's actually the only player. I wonder if we could get him. 
No, higher quality players. So the only one they're willing to let us have is Labinkovic. So I guess he's just fallen out with the hierarchy and they're like, yeah, you know what? Get rid of him. Go and play in the seventh tier in America. He won't agree to come, but if he does, I think it's all been completely fair. And um, we'll just have a world-class player come in and play for us. And we're just confirming the signing of another midfield player. This is the ironic thing. We'll get Labinkovic on loan and not actually end up needing him. Uh, Born Town finished fifth in the Premier League in this year, just gone as well. So um, they could do with freshening things up a little bit. Maybe the long-term goal of the save should be end up managing them again. Do so well here. The only team I can leave for is there. And we go back to original Bourne. Um, I don't want to click send on a language, but I'm wondering why there's two options. Um, what languages are we going to send him to learn? This is um, uh, per, per, Pervert Saren, Perev Saren Dunby, who is a 22-year-old Mongolian international central midfield player, two-and-a-half-star current ability, four-and-a-half-star potential, um, as we continue to pad out the first-team squad and continue to demonstrate that apparently I can just bring in Dross from all over the world. This guy came up in our recruitment meeting. I don't know why. He's only ever played in Mongolia. But he came up in our recruitment meeting. He's not even on a contract. He's he's, he's come into the US from Mongolia on a non-contract. Um, he only gets paid if he plays. And even then, he's only going to get £60 a match. I feel like this might be where Goran Pavlov is getting his money from all of a sudden. That he started to pump, pump into the club. There's some kind of illegal immigration system that he's running because this guy i don't think he should be in america well the southampton deal fell through and i was hopeful for a little while but no labinkovic doesn't want to come and play in the american seventh tier believe it or not um so fair enough i have that has made my mind up though that they're all fair game now um but if i can convince a born town player to come and play for us on loan I think that's fair game. So, well, oh, there you go. He's on the transfer list. Do you want to come to America? Well, we can't quite give you £61,000 a week. Um, how about in the under-23s? There must be there must be somebody we could get on the lower end of the salary scale. Um, you, you're wanted by someone. Do you want to come and play in America? No, can't even loan him. He must be out of contract soon. Um, you've got a great name when Wayne Gilfeder. Come on. Higher quality players. Ridiculous. Here's your confirmation then that a few of those fringe players are now gone. Uh, Costa, Lynch, Flores, Maldonado are the ones who were in and around the first team squad last year who've now left the club. A bunch of the young players have moved on as well. We've got some contracts expiring at the end of this season, um, but I'm not going to fiddle too much with them at the moment. Obviously, the likes of Hu Yan, or hey Hernandez, Stephen Stone, we're probably Jeff Brook. Even these guys are probably getting new contracts, but we'll worry about bringing new players in before we worry about what we're going to be doing in a year's time. Um, likewise with all this, we're just going to leave all as is for now. And um, we should have a couple of new players arriving with us on the first of July as well. I'm not sure if they're going to show up right now or if we have to wait until it officially ticks over. It's nine a.m. They should be in. Um, we're already getting matches rearranged, which is odd. Um, there you go. Here's our new signing. So these are three more players who we had confirmed over the last couple of weeks or so. So Kevin Fink is a striker or a central midfielder. He can play in either. He's a one and a half star current ability or and a half star potential ability player. Um, so in the mix in both of those positions, apparently 15th best central midfielder. But he is the fourth best striker. It shows we're a little bit weak um, at centre forward. He's operating at a National League Division 2 level, which is the league we're in. Um, and he's only showing his one and a half stars. It shows the difficulty we've got of getting players um, that are actually going to be competitive in this league. Because, they, I mean, I don't understand. How can a one and a half star player be at the level of this league? And um, we've also got Antonio Javier Suarez, who is a defensive midfielder or central midfielder, two star current ability, five star potential. We've actually got this guy on a proper contract and he'll be our seventh choice central midfielder. I mean, that's not strictly true looking through this. Um, Town Road, Preston, why are you? Um, I think they all play in different positions as well. Um, but Suarez uh, was at Oakwood previously. He's been playing in this division for years, over 200 games in this league that we're playing in. He's got plenty of assists in his past as well. 
Um, so hopefully he's going to be a, a solid con a solid addition to our midfield. And then Jamal Martin is a new centre back, um, nineteen years old, two and a half star current ability, five star potential, right in that mix um, with the centre backs. Um, as somebody who is again good enough for this league, been at Oakwood. What's happened to Oakwood? Why have we been able to steal all their players? Because they got relegated last year. That's why we've been able to nick a couple of players off them. So they'd been in and around this league for a while, got relegated, and we've taken what I'd like to think is a couple of their best players off of them. Um, <laughs> otherwise, I don't want to. I don't want to get us in a relegation mix by bringing in those players. Um, let's just welcome everybody in, give them squad numbers, get them welcomed into the squad as well. We're not going to send them on language courses um, because that would be ridiculous. Um, because we can't afford it. So we'll just move on from those. We've got some youth players who've moved up into the first team squad as well. And this is what, if we can eventually get there, my mouse wants to come back onto the right monitor. This is what our first team squad looks like now. So we have currently 24 players in our first team squad. Some of these are a little bit iffy. Brandon Hernandez on one star current ability. Probably need to be moving him on. He's been he's been here forever. And never got in the team. We signed him back in the first season. Um, and he's never really played any decent amount of games. I don't know why he's still here. He's got another year left on his contract. I must have given him like a 15-year contract right from the word go. Um, but that's that's our squad of players. We've got a little bit of money. We've got quite a lot of money left in our wage budget to play around with. So expect more new faces to arrive. Um, we certainly need someone on this left-hand side. We've only got Williams and Dragovan over there. Um, central midfield, we've added some quality this summer. We could still, I'd love four-star quality players. We've got Beck Nazarov, we've got Izaguera, we've got Hernandez and Stone, Uyan. But beyond them, we that's the kind of quality we're looking for. You can see Wayu's now in the first team squad. As a 16-year-old, I mean, I think we'd probably go with him this year unless we find someone significantly better. Um, and then lots of similar standard centre-backs. Left-hand side definitely needs strengthening, though, both left-back and left-midfield. It was the same story from last year. Left-back, left-midfield, central midfielders. That's what we want. And we've got money to go and get them with. It's just going to be about finding the players because so much of what comes on our scout reports is exactly like this. One-star current ability, five-star potential, which is lovely if you're building a team for the future. I want a team that's going to get us promoted this year. I want the next Jorge Hernandez to walk through the door and announce his arrival. I mean, like that, potentially. Should we just take a few of these better guys in on trial? I bet none of them will come. But these ones who are towards the top of this current ability list, let's get them in on trial, see if any of them are going to end up any good. And immediately, they're rejecting trials. Oh, no, it was the team rejecting the trial. Hold on, then. Let's click continue one more time, see if we actually get these boys in on trial, um, or if they're going to reject us. So a few of them seem to be coming in. This is positive. These might have been the uh, the youngsters we were already offering. No, I think we get... Ah, oh, there you go. There's the first one to snub me. Um, but the majority of them have come in. So we might be able to pick up a few more signings. That little batch of trials that's just come in. Oh, good. They're great. Right, next little batch of players is in. Diego Washington um, is a central midfielder, 17 years old, two and a half star current ability, five star potential. The best right wing back at the club with it that's... The third best central midfielder at the club. Um, he's uh, He was at, at Boston in National League Division 1 last year, having previously been playing for good old Seacoast United down in the Northern Premier League. Um, I thought he was actually released from a higher level. Perhaps these two are the ones that have come in from the championship clubs. Luis Gomez is a 17-year-old striker, another target man. You know we love a target man around here. Um, he's already almost as good as the likes of Hernandez, and Stone, and yeah, here you go. He's in from the championship. So championship Hartford releasing him and us swooping in to pick him up. Uh, Price Jr. Um, is the is the final one to come in now. There's a bunch more from the championship I'm trying to get as well. But Price Jr. is a right back or right winger. Three-star current ability, four-star potential. Um, he's been around about a little bit. Um, spent some time in Portugal. Um, spent some time in League One. Um, here playing for Birmingham in League One. Um, he seems to have dropped down an awfully long way to end up with us from being in Portugal. Is he Portuguese? Why has he spent so much time in Portugal? Um, oh, he was... He could have got Portuguese res residency, but decided not to. 
fair enough. I probably would have done it while I was there just to make it easier to go back at some point. But he's in um, as another option for us on the right-hand side. Um, wowzers. He's on trial with Boston. I don't even I don't even need to know. I just see those stars. Yes, you can have whatever you want. Don't go to Boston. Um, in addition to him, um, there's a bunch more defenders we're trying to get in. A lot of these, any of the unattached ones are likely to be from um, higher leagues, especially the the teenage, the teenage higher, uh, yeah, the teenage ones are from higher leagues. I know what I'm trying to say. I'm getting distracted by this guy. I need to have another look. David Brown. I mean, he's not very well scouted. He's only 23% scouted, so we have to take all of this with a pinch of salt. But he's another one. He's been released by Hartford. We seem to be picking up Hartford players this summer. He's six foot six as well. Oh, I'm in love. Well, we weren't able to get that centre back who Boston were in for. He didn't go to Boston, though, thankfully. Um, and also, we managed to avoid Boston taking one of our star men, Beck Nazaroff. They were in for him as well, but we put him on a two year contract. He's our best defender. We don't want him going to our local rivals. And we found him in Turkmenistan. He's ours. Um, but we were able to sign ourselves a left back. If I can, can I click on him? Game? Game. Can I click on him? There he is. Diego Solis um, is an 18-year-old left back, left, left wing back, four-star current ability, five-star potential ability, comfortably the best left back we've ever had. Comes in from New England um, down in, oh, I was going to say down up in the championship. They even had a year in the Premier League. Um, but he comes in from then. And uh, we're actually finally starting to reach the point where we can start collecting up some of these talents that are released from the bigger clubs. He might actually be considered the best player at the club. Um, he is. He's considered to be better than Huyan, better than Hernandez. That, boys and girls, is a signing. Diego Solis in on a one-year contract. We might need to look to extend that urgently. He's got a very, very wide side parting as well, which... Looks suspiciously like he's hiding a comb over. Um, but that is turning into a half-decent squad. We still need a left winger. Um, we've still got plenty of money to spend. We've brought in a couple more players who are probably going to be fringe players. Um, David Luda, um, who can theoretically play on the left wing, might even end up playing there, but he's only a two-star player currently. He's in from our pals at Seacoast United. Um, and we also got Henry Galal, who's a 20-year-old, two-star current ability striker, or centre-back. He can do either. Apparently, he's better at being a striker. But, I mean, with, with all these ones, who can really judge? Um, he's come in from... In fact, he's a, he was with us before. He came through our youth team. And I've only just noticed. So he came through our youth team, left us to go to Boston, left them to go to Boston City. Now he's completed the circuit, ended up back in Bourne. Does that mean he's homegrown at club? It is. Oh, that's beautiful. When when it's ready for us to play in the Club World Cup, Annie Galal can be there with us. He was born in Bourne, which means he's fluent in US English. He can teach everybody else, which is very handy. I didn't even realise we'd done that. Now I'm going to re-edit and pretend that we did it deliberately and we're collecting our old youth players back up because that's what's really happening here. Right, we've just brought in a load of loans for free. Not necessarily players that are going to be better than what we've got, but they were available for loan. They didn't cost anything. And we didn't have enough players last year, so hopefully this way we'll have a few more players. So Jose Calvillo comes in from the Maryland Bobcats on loan until the end of the season. Um, he's never really scored many goals, but then he's not likely to play this season. Um, Danilo Almeida is a central midfielder, comes in on loan from Boston for the season. And he played a couple of games from up in Division 1 last year, so... You never know, he might end up any good. Gustavo Gomez is a 17-year-old Mexican on loan from Pittsburgh Academy for the season. And then lastly, also on loan from Pittsburgh, we have Tom Rocker, um, who is another striker. Three-star current ability on this one, so we might actually have found someone who might occasionally get somewhere near the team. Could, could eventually be a US National Premier Division striker. That's not the Premier League. That's like the top of non-league. Um, like National League, National equivalent level if you're looking at it in England but still not a bad player to have in on loan we've also brought in another free transfer who looks trash and we're spending too much money on um, he was scouted well but I should know better than bringing in a 27 year old he's two and a half star current ability he's got no potential to improve he's not even as good as Jeff Brook um, but he has been playing for the last five years in the league above ours almost ever present so maybe he's better than he looks who knows um, but I think we are close to being complete now. 
Um, we've still got plenty of money left, but we're running out of time. We still haven't got a left winger. Sam Williams is likely to be starting on that left-hand side for the sixth season in a row. But everywhere else in the squad is looking pretty healthy at this point. We just need a left winger to turn up on a scout report or with my director of football or just kind of stumbling past the ground. Any of that would be fine, really. Well, no fancy left winger did appear, so that's it for transfers for the summer so far. Obviously, it continues for another month or so once the season gets up and running, so there's still a chance. And I just had a little look at the season preview. Oh, he's not... Like, three days ago, I looked at the season preview and Hu Yan was in it on the right-hand side in the Media Dream 11. He's now not. Rubbish. Uh, the media do seem to think we're looking good for promotion, though. Um, we're there as four favourites. Uh, Baltimore, who I thought would be competing with us, are down in 14th place. It looks like the relegated teams are all a little bit rubbish, so we don't need to worry about them. Although Carolina, who've got promoted this year, um, look like they're uh, look like they're going to be something of a challenge. I feel like we've come across Carolina before. Um, were they maybe? Did they finish second to us that year? Maybe. So Carolina have come up and looked like they're going to be quite good. I'd like to think we're still better than they are. Golden State finished in 18th place last year and are considered favourites for the title. So on that basis, I think it's probably likely to be between us, Charlotte, Carolina, Georgia, maybe. We'll see. It's difficult to judge from this. We will, uh, I mean, there's academy, to, like Phoenix Academy, I think, were right up there last year. Yeah, they finished third place last year. So to have Phoenix Academy down there in 18th place just shows what an absolute pile of bobbins this is, so we're just going to ignore it. Um, and hopefully start the season in a winning fashion. I mean, we c it couldn't start much harder based on what we've just identified. Carolina and Charlotte as our first two games coming up in Monday's episode. Easy peasy. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.